just like to say thank you so much for coming tonight. Um, it's really important to us to have you all in a room together because uh, all of you, in some way or another, uh, form a bit of a backbone of um, our foundation. Uh, and so before we get started on the Tour de France, which is going to start shortly, um, and obviously back, be up on the screen here, I just wanted to quickly, um, I guess, grab your attention around what it is that we do and um, why it is that we exist. Um, yeah, because a lot of you would have seen that there's so much going on out there uh, as far as the different things that we're doing. And I just wanted to kind of concisely put it together uh, for those of you that are familiar with it and some of you who might not be. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank all of our sponsors uh, for being here. And there's quite a few of you. Um, and I'd like to name them all. We have like the Chamber of Minerals and Energy, Western Australia, uh, Bond Junior Cycling, uh, SMEC, Cash Management, Oral7, Pedal Mafia, Horizon Power, uh, Linus and Phobium, uh, West Cycle and Oz Cycling, Pharmacy 777, Infocrank, Renai, Bugganu Aboriginal Corporation, um, and also some of the founding members of um, Verus Limited. That, that are here that help uh, set up this this foundation from inception, and quite literally, if you weren't here, we wouldn't be here. So, um, apart from that, I'd also like to uh, acknowledge some of the Perth to Laverton riders that are um, riding this year. Um, that's the Chamber of Minerals and Energy Western Australia Perth to Laverton Cycling Classic. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge some of our Masters team members who are here, and. Um, also the incredible work that goes into running this foundation from so many of our volunteers and members, um, our, our board members uh, who are here, who literally we couldn't do what we do without you, and the incredible work of the likes that Sabine does, particularly with the uh, Laverton uh, Cycling Project. And then finally, we've also got a few of our uh, elite riders here. Um, they've managed to um, come in from the um, the off season and um, grace us with their presence and we're very happy to have you here, so welcome. Um, tonight, I guess, uh, I wanted to just, as I said, describe to you briefly what the Cycling Development Foundation does or the CDF. Um, a lot of you might have seen on media more recently some of our successes that we've had. Um, and there have been quite a few. We, re we recently won the Oceania Cycling Championship, Road Championship, for under 23 which uh, is a huge accolade to for any team. Um, we scored five victories in Europe as well. Um, one across elite women, one across junior women, and three across junior men. Uh, never in my time of racing in Europe have I experienced that density of success. So um, yeah, a real accolade to the, the riders and the preparation. Um, an outcome of that was a whole raft of people coming to us and saying, well, what are you guys doing over there? As in, what are you doing over here in Perth? Um, and it kind of led me to think, yeah, I don't know, well, what are we doing here? Uh, that's actually a really good question. So, um, but clearly a lot of hard work's going on and um, you know, it's all part of a bigger uh, and broader program. We also this year had uh, Mackenzie uh, Coupland, who's just in his second year of cycling, represent Australia for one month in Europe managed to race the Tour of Fra Flanders, the Women's Junior Tour of Flanders with them. Uh, also uh, was uh, present in Nations Cups. So these are select invite only events for the best junior athletes in the world, internationally. Uh, we had success in a former rider of ours in Jai Hindley, winning uh, the pink jersey. He was in our inaugural team that had much success. Obviously, um, Michael Storer at the uh, Tour de France. Hopefully, we'll see him. Uh, we certainly saw him in previous nights uh, in the breakaway. Another former rider of ours. Um, apart from that, a lot of our athletes that have been part of our program that's been going for eight years now have actually gone on to do incredible things. Some of them are in medicine, some of them are in other professional fields. And you'd like to think that they, a small part of what we did, they carried with them in order to allow them to do that. Um, and really, I guess, to wrap that up, the, the journey um, for the
for so many of our juniors going into uh, elite ranks, and that's what our pathway kind of uh, fosters. Um, the hardest part of their journey, despite their successes, is, is yet to come. And that's a little bit of what I wanted to describe to you tonight. Uh, to give you an inside look as to what this thing actually is and the importance of it within a human development landscape. Um, so, obviously we've got this incredible picture here of some of our youngest riders in um, Kings Park. There's me at the back getting slowly tailed out on the uh, left hand side, as always. But that kind of typifies like the experience of where it all begins. This is where it began for guys like Jai Hindley, um, Michael Saw and others, in that they had a small group of people around them that supported them to do excellent things. You know, and, and I can rattle off one or two people in both of those instances that were kind of critical to their development. Um, those two people that were involved in that type of um, excellence at such a young age, neither are involved in the sport anymore. Um, so can fall out of the sport for a variety of reasons. But athlete attrition's really high and coach attrition's really high. Okay, and so um, developing systems that promote excellence is actually really, really important for sustainability perspective. Um, just quickly, I've got like four slides I want to get through with you. The Cycling Development Foundation is a not-for-profit organisation that runs to basically develop cycling systems for people or groups that need it. Okay, so what we do, four main things. One, the Chamber of Minerals and Energy WA Perth to Laverton Cycling Classic. This is a ride that basically raises funds for the Laverton Cycling Project, the second one, and also takes in an incredible cross-cultural educational experience with traditional owner groups, indigenous owner groups that share their knowledge of law, culture and country with us as we pass through their land all the way through to Arnold Laverton. The reason why that ride exists is because of the second one, the Laverton Cycling Project. That's a project that for this year, for the first time ever, has a program run for a full year in Laverton with the youths and the community there that are kind of at risk. Okay, so really exciting that we could sit down with the Shire at the beginning of the year and say, hey, we're here for 12 months, what do you want us to do? This is the first time that's ever happened to them. Okay, so Laverton Cycling Project basically services at-risk Indigenous youth and community members or elements through cycling-related health programs. Really, really important because the opportunities for like engaging in these types of activities out there are very, very minor. The third one, Junior Cycling Academy. So that's basically a development program for aspiring athletes to progress them towards high-performance outcomes. So kind of garnering and developing and fostering these attributes of kind of hard work, resilience, you know, all those kind of bu buzzwords at a young age. A lot of that goes on um, just in a hands-on um, perspective, you know, through sessions, testing, gym training, mentoring, rapport, with uh, a small number of athletes, up to about 15. It's a pretty applied thing. That's another thing that the CDF runs. Finally, we have nationally registered male and female racing teams. These racing teams provide pathways for aspiring juniors to come through to be able to race at the highest level in Australia through the Oz Cycling recognised high performance pathway. So at the moment, and the current structure, the NRS series is the high performance pathway for cycling in Australia. And we're um, an equal part of it, and we are the longest serving male and female national team in um, NRS, that's us. So we've been around for quite a while now. That little um, blurb there, best probably summarised by this little pathway. This charity ride raises funds for the Laverton Cycling Project. Laverton Cycling Project provides opportunity for youths and at-risk elements, in, 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 sorry, in an, in an at-risk community. Within that, there's opportunity for them to then go into the Junior Cycling Academy to then experience racing at an elite level, okay? So 
That is kind of our pathway and our vision. Cycling for everyone. Okay? Dropping a bike in Laverton in that community is a pretty big deal. Because they just don't have resources like that. Leave aside resources that actually show them how to use it, how to service it, come together socially, train, exercise, all the benefits of um, cycling that we derive from and that we all experience from riding around the river with our mates or whatever it might be that we do. Okay? So that's our pathway. This is why we service it. Just quickly, why the pathway? A really interesting study was uh, only just recently released that went for six years. Looked at elite athletes in an Olympic, across two Olympic cycles. Delineated success amongst these elite athletes by one major psychosocial factor that had happened to the best athletes in this sample. And that psychosocial factor was a really adverse childhood event that occurred at a young age and the proximity of sport to that adverse event. So, kids often have an adverse event. Okay, and so to be candid, it could be anything from like a parent leaving home, it could be alcoholism, it could be a traumatic death of a, um, someone close to them, whatever it might be. The proximity of that event with the introduction to the sport was causal or associated, have a heavy uh, association with the, some of the best outcomes in Olympic athletes. So if we go back and look at something like Laverton Cycling Project where unfortunately there is a lot of disadvantage and a lot of um, uh, uh, social demographic issues, cycling provides an opportunity for them to develop, to invest in something that's healthy for them, where otherwise they might revert to more maladaptive strategies, drugs, alcohol, all the stuff that's prevalent in our urban society, but within um, a community that has a large indigenous element to it. So it really is a case of cycling is so much more to, um, to, to us than what we might think. Follow on to that uh, was Duckworth's research in the junior development that showed junior like extracurricular sports, so any type of sport that occurs outside of school, you know, that they invest in in addition to their, their normal work, school work, um, showed that this type of learning to kind of strive, succeed, fail, get back up again, go again, so on and so forth is really heavily associated with adulthood outcomes later in life and successful outcomes. Like things like, in a sales role, ability to generate um, income or profit. Health, well-being, their ability to manage themselves through strenuous circumstances. Sport does that. And it's kind of been evidence now across the lifespan. So, and what's really interesting is across these kind of um, nuances is that the hurdles are psychosocial, they're not so much physical. And research has even recently looked at um, getting all the um, Australian institutes, states-based institutes, through the AIS, has collated all this information around what is it that athletes or aspiring athletes find so difficult. And they rattled off all these categories in order. Health was an issue, well-being. Things like support services was really important, the level of coaching they received, the clear definition of processes. Financial um, constraints was only ranked fifth. Okay, so this is what they need, they need support here. They need, need support here. Um, the pathway structure, the format as to how it was delivered, organisational domain. Uh, dynamics, competitive stress, performance potentials, challenges, selection and transition through different phases, so on and so forth. So the hurdles for aspiring uh, juniors are, are largely psychosocial and a lot of that stuff is inherent to any organisational system, you know, be it occupational, um, be it sporting or whatever. These are the issues that um, block any um, business's ability or company's ability to thrive, okay? And so what's really important is to understand that 
striving and shortfalling is inherent in the human condition and how we get back up and how we support people in doing that creates the outcome we want. All right? This is why, in my opinion, the CDF exists. It's a pathway for human development and it's more than just sport. Finally, when we look at expert input, so when I was away in Europe and we had the incredible success with these athletes, I was able to attend a conference and sit down with five of the head sports scientists from the major um, world tour teams. So I believe um, we had DSM, Green Edge, um, uh, Ineos, um, and two others there, and just sitting around having a beer, talking about stuff. And they wanted to kind of know a lot about the junior program <coughs> and what we're doing to develop athletes. Because now so many Grand Tour are winners or people doing really well come in at a really young age now. Back when I was racing, it was around 30 type thing. Now we're seeing like early 20s excelling. So they're like, how do we, how do, we do it earlier? How, how, do we, how do we do more? How do we focus more on this area? So a lot of really um, interesting questions came up out of that from the Pro Tour teams. Um, further to that, when you look at like the research applied to that area, so when I was at this conference with these sports scientists, we were able to go through a lot of the latest research in this area around human development. And it became really evident that for, particularly for junior athletes, there's a series of roadblocks that they've got to get through that are really clearly defined and known to anyone who's been in the sport. We just don't communicate it well enough or describe it well enough for the individuals in that pathway, okay? So um, similar to us being out in Laverton, running programs out there, facilitating exercise and social engagement, having clear structures around that is equally important um, in high performance settings as well as we go up that kind of um, pathway. So how do we get to um, like this area of like application? Really it's about um, for the athletes having clear communication strategies around what this looks like and what our programs look like in labor team. None of our ability to do anything that we've been able to do thus far across this pathway would be possible without pretty much every single person in this room has contributed um, something to this pathway over its kind of almost eight years of existence. We, and we quite literally, we would, I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for your involvement. So really important to understand that what we're heavily into whilst we have these pathways is investing in human development and seeing young people who don't have the opportunity to thrive. We want to see them thrive. And that just it basically involves more, a more hands-on, holistic approach to kind of human development. And coming out the other end of that, we, you've already seen the success of that recently, particularly in this last year. The success of this team um, probably hasn't been matched or equal, it has probably exceeded our greatest success when we had Jai Hindley and Michael Storer riding with us eight years ago. We're having more success now than we ever have done. Um, and I strongly believe it's because of the investment over the last eight years in systems that support athletes towards that end. So um, the CDF is basically a not-for-profit entity. It has private tax deductibility status. You can make donations to it and get a, um, a, a tax invoice from that. Um, and any support that you're able to afford us, as so many of you already, already are this year, um, be it private or be it commercial, um, I'd really like to explore those opportunities with you because we kind of would need all the help we can get to keep doing what we're doing. And this year's been really successful. We're hugely appreciative of your support. And um, I'm hoping tonight that at some point I get to have a chat with you um, further about that. If you have any questions or you want to know more about some of these successes, if you haven't already heard, heard from them. So um, that's it from me. I'm going to hand over to um, Tour de France.